You're listening to Multiversal You Podcast. I'm Andrea. We're in a season of shedding layers. Find out how to navigate this delicate process and get the most out of your trials. Coming up next. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for tuning into my show. I feel so blessed to be here with all of you. May this message bring guidance on your quest for spiritual knowledge. Today's episode is about shedding all the layers you've built up over time so you can expose your true identity. Unbeknownst to many of you, these layers are formed to protect the most valuable thing your body possesses, your spirit. Each coding reflects beliefs that align with the world, which also form parts of your identity. They shape who we think we are and are solidified as we establish connections that hold similar values. But these convictions will either open doors of spiritual expansion or they will create mountains of stagnation and complacency. It just depends on whether an individual is resistant to change. There's a lot of shaking going on. Some may look around and say that the world is in disarray, but it's only reflecting the struggles we hold within ourselves. An internal battle that manifests as a double-minded person. You know what you should do, but another part of you makes excuses for why you should stay where you are. And so the shaking persists. Spirit is asking us to reevaluate some ideas, beliefs, thoughts that bind us to a lower level of consciousness. And that can be jarring, especially if you've held on to something for 30, 40, 50 years. Changing a belief is difficult because you're an intricate tapestry made up of bright and muted tones formed by life experiences. Trying to remove one strand without disturbing the entire picture is impossible. Once you pull on a loose thread, everything around it will also unravel. The older the person, the more elaborate the pattern will be, so it's easy to see why someone would choose to veil themselves from anything that contradicts what they know or what they're comfortable with. Some have built an entire life on a faulty foundation. It's only a matter of time before it comes down if it hasn't already. It just takes one aha moment to crack open that barrier of complacency because you're not here to maintain the status quo. It may look like the world is going up in flames, but fire brings renewal, an opportunity to build from the ground up, a blank canvas, if you will. You have a chance to reinvent yourself. All of this heat and pressure serves as a refinement tool. Those who have awakened in this life will go through waves of self-discovery and introspection. That's the benefit of all the polarization. The contrast helps you locate your place of authenticity and balance. That's the reason you're shedding layers of old, dead skin. It served you up to now, but it won't get you to where you need to be. If you're a person who hates change, then this process will come in the form of hardships. It will feel as if you've been backed into a corner, and no matter how hard you try to break through, something holds you in the same spot. That's the universe applying pressure to draw you out of your comfort zone. They're trying to get some kind of movement going, so they box you in until you're so uncomfortable you have no choice but to move. The purpose of this stage of development is to get you to step outside the conventional way of thinking. If it seems like the doors keep shutting on you, then you're opening the wrong ones. At some point, 
you surmised that the only way to make a living wage was to work a normal 9-to-5 job like everyone else. That belief enabled you to find a home, covered basic needs, allowed you to develop skills that turned you into a well-rounded individual. But now it's time for your passion to take center stage, for you to step into your purpose. And the question that Spirit is asking you is, are you ready to forge an alternative path that others can follow for generations to come? The children of light are here to establish a fresh blueprint for humanity. We are living in unprecedented times that demand people who aren't afraid to veer from the norm. You each have your own unique marks to leave behind to those who will continue on with the work you start in this lifetime. But change begins with a willing heart. Because when all the shedding is complete, you will be the person who is prepared for everything they've ever dreamed of and more. Fear of the unknown is an underlying reason for not wanting to step out in faith or try something new. Fear of losing all you've worked so hard to build. But whatever falls away throughout this purging process has either completed its work within you, or it was never really yours to begin with. You're not sacrificing anything that has a place in your future. You're simply letting go of the pieces that are holding you back. And this is where a lot of us have to shift our perspectives. Up to this point, you have been told how to perceive situations like divorce, what constitutes success and failure, which attributes define a spiritual person, and so on. In all of those things, there's an underlying layer of judgment that gives us pause when we're standing at a fork in the road. We know what people will think if we take an unconventional path because we, too, came to the same conclusions before we found ourselves in that situation. It's even more difficult to swim against the current when family and friends identify you by the beliefs you've held since they've known you. You may be ready to reinvent yourself, but that can be hard when familiarity keeps shoving you back into your recognizable mold. For some odd reason, people seem to think that beliefs are permanent, but like everything else in the world, they develop. Sometimes spirit reveals information that stands true for a particular level, but expect them to expand on it as you move up the ladder of enlightenment. If you insist that the partial truth you've been given is the whole truth, then you're choosing to remain underdeveloped. And that's where judgment, condemnation, guilt, and fear take over as your teacher. You're trying to stay in a class you've already passed. Meanwhile, your spiritual team is patiently waiting for you to join them at the next level. Knowledge is power. It brings an indestructible foundation of peace and stability, courage and strength. It's hard to stop a person who knows who they are and where they're going. This metamorphosis is the only way to get whatever secret petitions you hold within your heart. They serve as a gentle reminder of why you came to earth. It is possible to make a living with your passion. To not have to work 80 plus hours a week to enjoy your life. But let your spirit take the wheel because it knows how to accomplish the impossible. You're trying to use a map to navigate uncharted territory, relying on someone else's discoveries when you're the one who's been chosen to pioneer a new world. We know the current system is not working. It's had its time in the sun, and now the sun is setting. With the rising of the moon comes enlightenment, reflection, rebirth. Don't let fear and routine keep you on familiar ground. This is the time to step out of your comfort zone. Some of you are letting misguided beliefs hold you in places you know deep down inside you need to move from. You know, it's funny, when I told my family that I was ending my 12-year marriage, 
some of them immediately tried to offer ways to fix it or they assumed something bad must have happened. None of them could seem to fathom that not all relationships are meant to last. In my spiritual ignorance, I married a karmic partner. However, that decision worked in my favor because I'm not so sure that I would have stayed had we not gotten married. And actually, let me correct that statement. I know I would have walked away long before it was time had it not been for marriage. Karmic partners are tough because their purpose is to help you heal deep-rooted wounds and fears. No more, no less. Him dredging up issues hidden deep within my heart helped me align with the Andrea that is a spiritual teacher. The version of me that's whole and ready for the next level of life. Because of him, I am confident. I love and fully appreciate myself, which enables me to view all creation in that same light. And for that, I will always be grateful for our time together. He taught me that the things I feared most in relationships were nothing more than a speed bump in the road. My imagination had given them way more power than they deserved, and what I thought would kill me only strengthened me. And now that I've experienced my worst-case scenarios, I don't have to waste energy trying to prevent something that may or may not happen out of fear. I'm able to put that power into more productive activities. In a previous episode, I mentioned how the waters were calm during the last two years of our relationship. If I had listened to people's advice, I would have stayed for all the wrong reasons. And just to be clear, staying in something past its expiration date is not a success. There are plenty of unfulfilled people living together for appearances. They perceive divorce as a failure, so they stay in a relationship that steals their energy and stunts their growth. Now that, to me, is failure. Because a common perception of marriage is that it's sacred and should last forever. However, two souls unify long before the wedding even happens. A ceremony doesn't bind their love for each other, it celebrates it. Just like a birthday party changes nothing. Whether or not you choose to celebrate, you're still one year older. The gathering of family and friends is not required, nor does it add anything to the aging process. It is beautiful when families come together to support a special moment in another soul's life, but that's all it is. A kind gesture that leaves an imprint of love and joy upon their hearts. And when two people agree to walk away amicably, that too should be praised. It means they have gone as far as they can together and have recognized that the rest of their journey requires a different path from one another. Some might perceive that as taking the easy route or giving up, but it's not. It's difficult to walk away from someone you love and have built a life with. But sometimes you need to love them enough to let them go and not demand that they grow alongside you. And it takes wisdom, courage, and strength to do that. Because they may not be spiritually prepared to shoulder the weights that your purpose demands or vice versa. Keeping them bound to you out of fear will overwhelm your souls until one or both burn out. Remember, the higher you go, the more responsibility, work, and sacrifice it takes. You will require every bit of energy at each stage of development. And every soul deserves to move at their own pace in their own time. It's unfair to hold on to someone who's not ready to move out of their comfort zone. And only you can make that determination. If you're leaving because you're upset or angry at them, then you're going for the wrong reasons. And if you don't find the why behind your reactions, you will carry that baggage into the next relationship and the result will be the same. I knew it was time for me to leave. And the moment we finalized our divorce, a wave of energy filled my entire body. When I got home, I sat down and closed my eyes. I saw myself letting go of an energetic cord that was attached to him. 
Suddenly, my skin vibrated all over. I intuitively knew that he had been siphoning off energy from me, and I was receiving it all back. I was stronger than I had ever felt and overwhelmed with joy. Not only that, but I could channel that excess of spiritual power into a healthy diet, exercise, and creating multiversal you. One of the toughest things is trusting your instincts. The best way to do that is tuning out people who are quick to offer advice but have nothing you want. Again, a successful relationship is not staying together because everyone else thinks you should. Longevity is good when both souls are in sync, helping each other to grow, moving in the same direction. When one is down and tired, the other is there to pick them up. They inspire one another to be better day in and day out, year after year. That is a healthy dynamic. Sometimes the people you meet along the path are only there to help you become the person who can nurture and maintain a healthy relationship that's waiting for you further down the timeline. One where there's no competition, no fears, no jealousy, just a willingness to serve and expand in unconditional love. And that's the place humanity needs to arrive at. You are all here to leave your special mark on the world. One that leaves hope, provides a new path of unity and love for generations to come. It is not every man for himself. We're in this together. Separation is an illusion. All of creation was made from the same energy formed by the same consciousness. Although it may feel like it, you are not disconnected or alone or detached from source, not for a second. It is constantly breathing life into you and you into it. You have been given the freedom to explore who you are as a piece of the greater whole so you can share your perspective, individual qualities, all of your color and life. Whatever woes, whatever joys, whatever failures and victories you experience add to the totality increasing the quality of its being. Spirit is calling you to break out of the mold, break out of the norm. Discover your authentic self by realigning with the things that bring you joy. As you begin to elevate, expect for people, places, habits, behaviors to fall away. There's no need to feel guilty for leaving any of those things behind. You've decided to expand and they're living the choices that are right for them. Both paths are good. They're just going in opposite directions. You are here to harness joy, peace, and love in this dark realm. Release all the layers you've built throughout the years so that your light can be seen, can be felt. I often mention how people are mirrors. They reflect your weaknesses and strengths. Some even help you spot hidden talents or gifts you didn't realize you had. Use that information as a guide. You now know what areas need improvement and which ones have been mastered. There's no such thing as failure, so don't cry over spilled milk. If your reaction wasn't what you wanted, that's okay. Acknowledge it, apologize, and try again. To help you implement change, come up with a routine that encourages new behaviors. For example, if you're a person that loves music but you notice your mood matches the energy of a song, then pick a positive playlist. It's harder to channel high vibrational energies when you're starting from a negative space. It's common for people to want to hear a sad song when they're feeling depressed, but fight the urge to do that. Don't let the world dictate your mood. Pay attention to your emotions when you're around certain people or places, doing certain activities. Even sitting at home listening to music that recalls memories from the past can complicate your desire to change. Because your mind will only show you the good parts if your current situation isn't where you want to be. 
fantasizing about a pleasant pastime only puts you in a victim mentality. And that is something you are not. Pull yourself back to the present with gratitude. Focus on all the things you have instead of what you don't have. The power of gratitude is it brings you into the now. And that is the only place that allows you to create the future you want. Remember, your current hardships are temporary and you control your destiny. You decide how long you stay in the furnace. Open your heart and mind to a different perspective, one that's devoid of condemnation. Don't shackle yourself to a lower form of consciousness by passing judgment on others, because you're the only one who will serve that sentence. Love is supreme, and it is the quickest path to enlightenment. Ride this energetic wave of transformation. Change won't be as difficult as you think. You don't have to give up anything. Just set the intention that you want to let go of certain things or habits and watch the desire fall away. Then you can put all of that energy towards developing the best version of yourself, the you that's always been there. The more baggage you release, the more room you'll have for new skills, people, places. If you're being led to take up a fresh hobby or apply for a job you've never done before, or maybe even moving to a whole new state or country, trust that it's prepping you for something greater. You don't have to jump into it right away either. Let the universe present opportunities that make for a smooth transition. And when the well of abundance dwindles, that's your cue to start making some moves. And just a quick side note. If you're a person who is currently backed into a corner and it feels like you're getting to a breaking point, then stop what you're doing and say out loud, I cannot bear this weight anymore. Give me understanding of what's happening or remove this burden for now. Your spirit guides will do what they know you can handle, but they're not in physical form for a reason. This world is hard. From their viewpoint, you may be close to manifesting your goals, but again, they see the entire map of your journey. You don't. You're wearing a blindfold and having to trust that you're heading down the right path. It can be too much for some to handle, and you have the authority to request relief. Their goal is to help you accomplish your purpose, not push you to an early exit point. But now is the time to discover who you are, the true you, which brings me to the title of this podcast, Multiversal You. There is a version of you that has everything you want. He or she is out there living the dream, your dream. No, it's not impossible, but it will take work. The hardships you find yourself in are there to apply pressure and heat so that the outer shells get removed once and for all. You're being molded to fit the person you were always meant to be, the one who is confident, peaceful, non-judgmental, innovative, overflowing with light and unconditional love. But it won't happen without your consent. Start making some moves, trying new things, stepping out in faith that everything will work in your favor. Because it will. The universe is willing and waiting to help you at every turn. If you get stuck, ask for guidance or signs. They'll send them to you in the craziest ways so that you undoubtedly know it was from them. Again, manifestation works in steps. Your dreams won't magically appear with no effort on your part. Nothing comes from nothing. If you want something, then you must do something. Your desires will fit seamlessly in your timeline. So don't let fear of the unknown stop you from getting a job you have no experience in or moving to a new country or ending a relationship. These are just steps along the way to discovering who you truly are and what your purpose is. Remember, always be kind and merciful to yourself throughout this process. You're not striving for perfection. It's okay to make mistakes. 
Some of you are learning how to trust your intuition, how to hear your spiritual guides and higher self. The more you tune into them, the more you'll recognize their voice. There's no need to wonder, what if I make the wrong choice and I end up in a tough position? Any hardship you go through will prepare you for your purpose and everything that goes along with it. Just keep going. Keep trying different things. Don't give up. The finish line is closer than you think. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like what you heard, please rate and subscribe to this podcast. Multiversal U is coming out with a YouTube channel at the end of August. I'm so excited to connect with you through video and we'll post the link in the description soon. Again, thank you so much for listening. As always, love, peace, and light to you all. Bye.